some places, the activity you see here is identified as backing. In other locations, it may be referred to as reversing. We'll use those terms interchangeably in this presentation, but this show isn't about definitions. It's about solutions. You see, the seemingly simple and often habitual action has proven to be deceptively hazardous. It doesn't matter where in the world you drive. Backing problems are quite consistent. I back my vehicle many times a day, and I've never had a backing accident until the one I had last week. I've been driving for a few years now, and I think that's pretty good. It isn't rocket science, you know. The act of putting a vehicle into the reverse mode doesn't seem complex or dangerous. And in the vast majority of cases, collisions don't occur. But make no mistake, this is dangerous. In almost every driving application or profession, people spend relatively little time reversing a vehicle. Unfortunately, no reliable, comprehensive records exist that give us a clear understanding about how much time drivers spend and how much distance they travel while backing their vehicles. We don't put clocks on the task, and odometers, with rare exception, don't work in the reversing mode. We can only speculate, but think about it. If you drove 100 miles or kilometers today, would even one of them be dedicated to reversing? One half? Maybe a quarter? Substantially less than that? Jobs with higher backing demands exist, but it's a very unusual profession that requires drivers to be in the backing mode for as much as one half of one percent of their total driving distances. Far, far less than that is quite likely. Many organizations do, however, carefully track their fleet collisions and their respective causes. Very commonly, backing or reversing collisions represent about 30 to 60 percent of their recorded incidents. So let's be aggressive and assume that a group of drivers operated in reverse while accumulating one half of one percent of their total driving mileage. We think that's very high. Next, let's make a conservative assumption that 30 percent of the collisions this group experienced were backing incidents. That's relatively low. If we do the math, math that doesn't seek to exaggerate the trouble, we'll discover that per mile driven, backing activity is 133 times more likely than driving forward to involve these people in collisions. This is not an insignificant issue. By following a symbolic string, we can reveal some of the problems you face whenever you back your vehicle. That accomplished, will provide some instantly usable tips and solutions that will help you avoid this sort of mishap. Why are backing collisions so prevalent? Well, let's start by understanding that many people take this maneuver for granted. Some give backing little thought or situational analysis. Perhaps they wouldn't behave that way if they had considered the rest of this string. You see, these vehicles are not primarily designed to operate in reverse. Sure, they can and do move in that direction, and it is by design. But moving forward is their primary purpose. So when we move the transmission into reverse, we simultaneously engage several disadvantages that don't exist when we are moving forward. First, consider that drivers face in one direction and move in the opposite direction. Now, much of what must be seen is confined to the mirrors. Visibility moving in this direction is far better than it is when you are moving in this direction. Also, consider that the pictures delivered by the mirrors are often distorted. Sometimes that distortion is deliberate, and sometimes it comes from depth perception issues that don't exist when you are looking directly at an object through a windshield. Adding to the problem is that most of the vehicle is behind the driver. Depending on what you drive, that problem can be more or less relevant. Next, let's consider that as you drive forward, the maneuvering axle is leading the vehicle and the rear axles are trailing behind. This relationship creates coordinated turns. Since it's probable that over 99% of your driving is moving in that direction, that axle design is quite logical. But when you reverse, the steering wheels are trailing the axle that leads the vehicle. That is an awkward, troublesome relationship that creates uncoordinated turns, visibility restrictions, and hazardous maneuvering in confined spaces. It's also important to give blind areas the respect they deserve. 
what you cannot see or what you cannot properly evaluate, you are much less able to cope with or defend against. These rear blind areas are larger and occupy much more space than do their counterparts to the front. Finally, consider that compared to driving forward, you're probably not very good at this. Why? Well, keep in mind that for most motorists, backing represents much less than 1% of their driving miles. Therefore, it's safe to say that people get far less practice in this driving mode. But please don't get us wrong. We aren't suggesting that you reverse more frequently to accumulate hours of practice. We think we have a number of better ideas for you. This string of disadvantages represents trouble and it accounts in part for the very high relative danger that occurs when we put our vehicles in reverse. Your first defense is awareness. The tips we are about to provide won't make this trouble-laden string go away, but if you employ them regularly, they'll help you make these sorts of incidents very unlikely. You may know about Smith System's five keys. We regularly teach them on road to the professional drivers of many of the largest organizations in the world. But the keys work during backing maneuvering too. <coughs> and we're going to show you how to put them to work in your world. We encourage you to pay careful attention. It's probable that you'll be able to use many or even most of these ideas in the next days and weeks. Our first key is aim high in steering. When we say aim high in this application, we are encouraging thoughtful planning. You'll use this key most as you're evaluating each new parking environment for the unique characteristics they all exhibit. In this key, we'll also encourage you to think about your departure upon your arrival. Plan for success by analyzing the environment in a sophisticated way. By the way, the use of this key isn't confined to your initial arrival, though that is an important component of its use. You can and should also use this key to reevaluate your situation as you approach your vehicle after visiting your destination, if you've left your truck during your stop. Our second key is get the big picture. It can be argued that backing collisions almost always have one or both of these things in common. The drivers either fail to see something important when they needed to see it, or they misjudge distances between some part of their vehicle and another object. Those are big picture issues. This key is about knowing, and we mean really knowing what is around you before you engage your reverse gear and begin moving. Our third key, is keep your eyes moving. The big picture is fluid and often quite dynamic. Here are a couple of examples. Let's first examine the person who almost never uses his signals. For the sake of this discussion, let's imagine that his intention is to turn right at this intersection. Let's further suppose that he has a tailgater right behind him. On a precautionary note, it's wise to keep in mind these days that nearby, there will be drivers who are fragmenting their attention in any number of ways. Only part of their focus is where it should be. That reduces margin for error for everyone in the immediate area. So by using his turn signal early, our driver could help the trailing driver make a good decision and back off to create some separation before both of them reach the intersection. As this driver glances back and forth between his proper and improper activities, a simple signal might make the difference. By neglecting to use the signal, our driver may be inviting this person to continue his or her tailgating activity right up to the intersection and our driver's unannounced deceleration and turn. All right, let's go back and look at a person who uses turn signals habitually. But let's change the situation a little. Our subject driver wants to turn right at this same intersection, but instead of having a tailgater tucked in behind him, he has a driver positioned here at this gas station exit. This driver is interested in injecting her vehicle into the traffic flow. She is impatient and isn't interested in waiting. Our subject driver, without thought, turns on his signals about here. It's routine and he is accustomed to doing it this way. But because his actions are so habitual, he fails to think about what his signal and the timing of it might mean to this individual. Because she is anxious to move, 
she might be enticed to believe that it is our subject driver's intention to turn here. Without much time to think, she might conclude that this is her chance to jump into traffic. So these two well-meaning people could collide here. His signal timing is faulty and her assumptions are flawed. And those two mistakes could lead to a fatal mistake. Yes, everyone has good intentions, but they could lead to a bad outcome. By delaying his signal timing by just a second or two, he could avoid sending a signal that might be misunderstood. The signal is still used, but the timing diminishes the danger. So let's allow for a signaling strategy that can work in most any situation. It just requires a little situation-specific thought. Remember the string we've spoken about? Much of that is here. But it's not here. Dangers and driving complications can come at you in many ways and from many directions. Not so much over here. So if it comes down to a choice, and if your educated mind tells you that there is a practical and safe alternative to this chaos, make the choice. Leave this mess to the people who seem to find it attractive. Okay, enough of that. Reversing a vehicle is a very common reality in your world, so let's talk strategy for those moments when slipping the vehicle into the reverse gear is necessary. But this discussion should really begin by preparing your mind for the task. Have you ever heard someone say that driving is really a full-time job out here? Conceptually, it's a terrific idea, but is it really possible? Please don't misunderstand. We encourage attentive driving, very attentive driving. But we must acknowledge that no one can think about driving full-time when they're out here. Give it some consideration. Have you ever spent an hour operating a vehicle during which no unassociated thoughts ran through your mind? What really matters here is the understanding that backing a vehicle doesn't take very long. And during this time, you can remain focused. You should remain focused. Remaining completely aware for these few seconds makes the ideas and tactics that you're about to learn quite usable and practical. All right, now you're entering the parking area. It's time to consider ways to take the trouble string out of play as much as you can. Part of your advanced planning should include your use of this theme. Think about your departure upon your arrival. Most drivers begin their thinking about how they safely leave their parking position when they return to the vehicle. That isn't strategic. Know that even when backing is unavoidable, it's absolutely true that not all parking positions are equal. Some are much better than others. Space is still a consideration. Find more of it when you can. If people and objects don't get close to you, they won't hit you and you won't hit them. Also, routinely consider protecting at least one side of your vehicle when it's practical and situationally safe. It cuts the odds of trouble a little. All of this is about using the space that most people don't, but should, want for themselves. But hey, what they don't know can help you. And considering another issue, what you don't see can hurt you. When possible, rule out situations that restrict your visibility as you re-emerge into any potential traffic flow. It's true, vehicles like this may park next to you when you're inside, but you know this one is here. It may be gone when you return, but why take the chance? As much as anything, good driving is about doing the small things right consistently. This situation blocks your visibility, and it blocks theirs. Neither of you may know that things are changing, and both of you should. Think small when you park. Small objects offer less visual restriction. In addition, when you can't see or when you can't see well, move very slowly. You'll retain better control, and you'll give other people time to respond to you as you emerge into their areas of visibility. In any reversing situation, moving slowly is wise. Why? Doing so allows you to move your head and eyes to keep the changing picture around you up to date as you slowly roll. Quick reversing prevents that. Good head and eye activity breaks up blind areas and prevents collisions that happen when people fixate on one or two objects in the vicinity. How are blind areas broken up? Well, though it defies conventional definitions, the truth is, blind areas are much larger than the areas that you cannot see. They are wherever you aren't looking. This sort of eye activity minimizes that reality. 
Also, in the unlikely event that you do make a mistake and collide with something, the damage will be less substantial when you are moving slowly. We recommend that you move at no more than one mile per hour. That's about a third of average walking speed. Since you are traveling a very short distance, the difference in time will be negligible. If you want to avoid backing collisions, make this rule part of your backing procedure. Proper head and eye activity helps you cope with these elements of the string. Next, we'd like to address ways to minimize the potential of pedestrian conflict. These days, people are walking around with mobile distractions and lowered eyes. Here, the burden of problem avoidance will probably fall on you. Be ready and be careful. Oh, and speaking of pedestrians, you may be one of them soon. As you approach your vehicle after a stop, start thinking. The backing task may be finished at this stop, but you can still be vigilant. Don't wait for this moment to engage your mind. Look the area over carefully because this viewing angle has some advantages over this one. Use both of these information gathering opportunities to obtain the big picture before you begin to move again. Here are a few more quick tips. In situations like these, or when other drivers are creating inadvertent trouble, think about communicating with them to create a win-win environment. A friendly tap of the horn can make a quick and decisive difference. You've got to pick your moments, but communication out here is a useful skill. If someone is walking or rolling into a dangerous situation and you can help diffuse it in this simple way, it can be worth the effort. Some of these events can be best handled with simple patience. Just wait for a moment until the problem moves past. It'll be your decision, so be ready to make it. Also, consider backing distance. If reversing can be 133 times more hazardous on a per distance traveled basis than moving forward, then this area becomes space that you shouldn't travel through if it's avoidable. The tip here is back no further than you must. Yes, many times the distance you must back is predetermined, but not always, as you'll see in the last part of this presentation. Remember this key? The tendency for many drivers when backing is to exclusively watch the lower portions of their vehicles. They are observing low-level fixed objects. To be sure, those cannot be overlooked. But too many collisions occur when people allow their eyes to dwell on what may be happening near the lower portion of the vehicle when this part of the truck is about to be involved in an unpleasant surprise. The upper portion should not be visually neglected. By literally aiming high, you are filling in part of the big picture. For the tallest vehicles and for their smaller counterparts, the acronym GOAL, G-O-A-L, is useful. These types of dents often have their roots in assumptions. Drivers believe they knew what was around them when they started reversing, and they didn't, or they didn't understand the changing relationships between their vehicles and the fixed objects located nearby. You might routinely obtain a pretty clear picture of the area you are about to back into as you first drive by. Good drivers usually make that a habit. But if you are at all unsure when you begin to reverse, don't hesitate to get out for a moment to reassess the surroundings near the sides and rear of the vehicle. Remember that this is a point of view that cannot be obtained from the driver's seat. Getting out is worth the effort if there is any doubt about nearby objects or spatial relationships. Many backing incidents are initiated by lazy drivers or drivers who are in a hurry. Taking this area for granted or taking short, assumptive cursory glances into areas that you cannot fully evaluate is unwise. If any doubt exists, get out and look. Don't feel foolish if you conclude that it's appropriate to do so more than once in complex environments. It's an effective method of coping with this sort of trouble, and educated drivers are likely to be the only ones you'll see doing it. We spoke earlier about the awkward relationships that exist when the front wheels maneuver, but the back wheels lead the vehicle. More axles only exacerbate the
problem. This relationship is most hazardous when reversing and turning is done simultaneously. In the backing maneuver, drivers often confine their eyes to the rear of their vehicles. After all, that is the direction in which they are moving. Meanwhile, the sides of their vehicles are exposed to danger as they turn. This combination of movement and driver behavior can lead to collisions involving the front fenders of their vehicles. Knowing this, knowledgeable drivers approach backing and turning with a few strategies. If you can back straight and avoid turning, it's usually the best option. If you make a mistake, the straight line motion only leaves the rear of your vehicle vulnerable. When you back and turn, the rear is still exposed, but so is the side or sides of your trailer and your cab. This can be compensated for, in part, by good driver vigilance, but it adds an element of risk that isn't desirable. Avoid this motion if backing straight is an option, but when you must back and turn, your head and eyes need to be very active. Since you know that the sides of your vehicle are at risk, you've got to be monitoring them consistently. And remember, that sort of whole vehicle attention is only possible when you move very slowly. We'd be remiss if we didn't cover side-side and blind-side reversing. Most vehicles have far better visibility on the side of the vehicle closest to the driver. He's closest to the mirror here, so visibility through it is better. In addition, visibility through the windows and down the sides of the vehicle is better from the side side. If you must back and turn, side side reversing is usually preferable. Blind side reversing is well termed. There are more visual restrictions when you must look across your vehicle and when your eyes are more separated from your mirrors. When backing and turning are in play, tractor and trailer angles can make the blind areas immense. These sorts of angles can add risk to the maneuver. The GOAL acronym can be useful whenever and wherever your visibility is obstructed and other objects are nearby. Another issue that influences your world should be addressed here. You have probably been frustrated by facility layouts that seem to be constructed to induce collisions. The truth is that many sites you've visited haven't been primarily designed with your tasks in mind. For assorted reasons and in a variety of ways, these assignments offer much more challenge than other destinations do. The space for your work isn't sufficient. Objects have been placed in baffling places, or maybe traffic flow or visibility issues put you at risk. In other situations, people will make short-sighted mistakes that may affect you. At times, their actions might be inconsiderate to the point of being dangerous. Many of the tips we've already provided will help here, but you've got to put your frustration aside and be at your best when circumstances are most demanding. Emotions can make it difficult to access your knowledge and skills and can get in the way of making the best decisions. You need even more awareness and clear thinking here. You are a professional and your patience and abilities will be tested on occasion. Sometimes they just don't understand the problem and may willingly help when you communicate effectively. The causes of the problems and the people involved will vary, but you need to rise above these issues, stay calm, and remain in control. Day to day, that is an important component of danger avoidance. Remember, an important part of your job is to pick up or deliver without incident while maintaining your schedule. Training, wisdom, and experience will help you cross the goal line safely. We are about to move to the final part of this presentation. This segment will allow you to use the keys, the ideas, the strategies, and tactics that you've been presented. Ideally, when you learn and use these concepts, you'll become proficient at habitual strategic thinking about your parking activities. These are thoughts that will occur to you as you approach and leave all parking areas. A summary of many of those backing tactics is on the form you've been provided or on your monitor, depending on your circumstances. It's time to review them now before the following interactive exercise. Let's take a few minutes to evaluate a collision that occurred some years ago in the life of a busy driver of a heavy goods vehicle. It's a classic incident because the driver's thinking process and his errors are quite instructive. We'd like you to analyze the event and to think your way through some of the mistakes the driver made 
and what he could have done to reduce his exposure to trouble. You'll find that a significant number of the tips you've been provided here could have been effective to avoid this mishap. On your form or on your screen, please put a check mark next to each key that you think might have been useful here. Okay, here we go. Please watch and listen carefully. I was making my last stop on a Friday afternoon. It's a stop that I make almost every week and it's normally pretty routine. This time, as I passed some of the loading doors, I noticed a man and a woman near the employee parking area. They seemed to be having an argument or some kind of intense discussion. I pulled past them and prepared to back into one of the doors I usually use. I could have used any of the doors, but the ones closest to the office are the most convenient and it's where most people park. While the guys inside unload, I get some coffee and do my paperwork before heading back to the shop. Anyway, I figured that the people I mentioned would have moved as I started to back up, but they didn't. And I admit they grabbed some of my attention. As I started to move, the sun was in my eyes and I had to be sure that people were getting out of the way or at least staying put. The glare and a dirty windshield made it difficult to keep track of them and my backing path at the same time. To avoid trouble, I was trying to get away from them as quickly as I thought I safely could. As I backed, the angle of my trailer blocked my full view of the box on my right. I thought I turned sharply enough to avoid trouble, but I guess I was a bit distracted. I hit the left side of the trailer and gouged it, my trailer too. It was a simple mistake that could have been avoided if those people hadn't have been so self-absorbed. This incident took just a few seconds to play out, but it could have been prevented in many ways. All of the keys and many of the tips you've been given could have been used preventatively here. So let's see how well you've analyzed the situation. Let's outline the key one issues first. Brad used the word routine to describe his stop. Driving and parking shouldn't be viewed as routine because that approach stifles clear thinking. Though they often have similarities, each situation is different and they should all be given proper attention and focus. In addition, when we use this key, we plan ahead to avoid trouble. Brad said he could have parked anywhere. As we'll see more clearly in just a moment, Brad chose an area that was much more challenging than was necessary. We'll turn now to a few key two concerns. It can't be fairly argued that Brad had a complete understanding <coughs> of his shifting environment as he hit this trailer. The big picture, as you are moving, is necessarily changing. Here's a pretty good rule to follow as you reverse your vehicle. If you don't know, don't go. And if you don't know, it's usually wise to get out and look. Brad mentioned that his trailer angle caused him to lose track of the trailer that he knew was to his right. His thinking was fragmented, and his awareness of his surroundings was incomplete. That combination proved costly. By the way, Brad mentioned his dirty windshield. It's hard to get the big picture if you can't see well. It's worth a mention here to keep your windows and mirrors clean. It's a simple precaution that pays off. We bring Key 3 into this for a couple of reasons. It's probable that Brad was fixating, at least in part, on the nearby people. Eye fixation is dangerous. In addition, Brad's haste to get away from the arguing people seemed to have caused him to move his rig too quickly. Backing slowly is essential, and there are really no exceptions to that rule. Remember, back no faster than about one mile per hour. That allows you to use this important key. Keep your eyes moving. Key four was in play too. We won't elaborate too much here because this picture is worth a thousand words. These spaces were available and Brad chose this one. Space is very valuable and he chose congestion. In addition, parking here would have allowed Brad to reverse his vehicle without turning and it would have allowed him to avoid this front-end conflict. Look at the difference between the complexity of this backing environment and the relative simplicity of this one. With just a little thought and planning, Brad would have seen that these two parking positions weren't equal. We encourage drivers to strategically evaluate every stop and to make the best of each of them. 
We also think key five could have been used. These people were talking and not paying attention to the circumstances around them. A friendly horn tap could have been used to free Brad's eyes, so he could have evaluated the rest of his picture more carefully after eye-to-eye -eye communication was established. We know people are often reluctant to communicate in this way. Sometimes that reluctance can be justified by the circumstances, and maybe this was one of them. We mention this now because we want people to remain aware of the situational value of this tool. Be ready to use it when doing so seems appropriate. So you see, all of the keys could have been used, but we'd be hard pressed to say that any of them were. This backing collision had its foundation in educational gaps and mental mistakes. Most of them do. The point of this exercise is to promote an advanced, flexible and versatile thinking process that will help you to make your next stop, and all the ones that follow, safe and collision-free. We hope your toolbox is filled with useful information that can help you avoid all of these unfortunate incidents. Now it's about dedication and practice until the use of the tools becomes instinctive. These collisions are usually optional, and the knowledge you now possess can help you stay out of trouble. And as you know, that's a very good option. Thanks for spending time with us.